Growing up, two of my favorite toys were Monster High and Littlest Pet Shops. What's new at the new Littlest Pet Shop Clubhouse? I wasn't the type of kid who customized my toys because I'd get really attached and I was so scared of ruining my precious things. But now that I'm an adult and have a bit more confidence in my artistic abilities, I feel like now is the time to live my dream and customize my very own pet shops. So I dragged out my old bin of pet shops to see if anyone needed a makeover. And I found quite a few friends who are in dire need of a makeover, uh, to, to say the least. Nearing the end of the fourth pet shop generation, they had released a lot of blind bags with super simple designs, like simpler than the newest blind box release, but they were all flat colors and they weren't really creative, honestly. I mean, like there wasn't really anything going on. And this was also around the time when they started to get a little bit more whack, like, what even is that? But I had tried collecting a few just for fun because I was 11 and I still absolutely loved pet shops. So all of these guys are from the Musically Talented Blind Bag series. And again, they are devastatingly simple. I remember thinking that back then as well, but at the time this was kind of all I had left of Lil's Pet Shops in my local stores. So I didn't really have anything else to choose from and I was kind of just like grasping at anything that was left from my childhood because this was also the time that Monster High got hit by the simplification beam. Brother, uh, what's that? So now that we have our contenders, let's insult their very being and choose who will get a complete makeover today. Since the theme for this series is music, instead of making some cute simple designs inspired by instruments or something musical, <laughs> they decided that stamping the same two music notes on their foreheads was enough and they called it a day. Now to the keen viewers, uh, you guys will notice that I actually wiped off some of the notes with acetone at some point, which honestly, in my opinion, improved them drastically. The molds, on the other hand, have absolutely nothing wrong with them. They're the same ones that I remember playing with when I was a kid, and there are some really great ones in this series, which is probably why I bought so many, and that will be absolutely perfect for what we're doing. Here's the two contenders I ended up choosing. These are actually the only molds I have of these pets in my whole collection, so that will just give me a little bit more pressure not to mess these up. Uh, really love this cat. Her pose is like super cute and the walrus is just so silly that like how could I not choose him? <laughs> Look at his little face. They're both really nice shades of blue which I won't be changing since I want to keep things easy for me as these are my first customs. All right, let's get started. First off, we need a clean slate to work with. So I use this acetone to wipe off their faces. Don't worry, this only hurts them a little. All better. I should probably mention if you're using acetone, make sure to wash the pets with soap and warm water when you're done, just so the acetone doesn't break down the plastic slowly over time. Yay! So by the looks of this video, you would think that I'm just jumping into mixing the paint, but before I even wiped the paint off of the pets, I took a photo of them both and I planned my designs in Procreate on my iPad, which will make this entire process easier. And I absolutely recommend doing this always if you have plans on doing your own customs. After doing lots of research, which was just me spending hours watching pet shop repaints and it was probably some of the most fun research I've ever had to do. <laughs> I learned that the best way to achieve an even coat of paint is to just use watered down acrylic paint and apply it in several thin layers. Um, I'm using a lot of different kinds of acrylic paint, so just make sure that the paint that you're getting is acrylic. So that means there will be a lot of time just going towards letting the paint dry. Uh, and my technique is that I went in and did one coat all with white and then as I let that dry I went on to do a different color paint and so on kind of just went back and forth which kind of worked out but also I could just I just cut out all of the time that it dried so you guys wouldn't have to wait like I did. Starting with the walrus I went with a very monochromatic color palette so you'll be seeing a lot of blues and teals which I also felt was very fitting because he's a little sea creature and that kind of just like ties everything together. First off I did all the white areas like his teeth and eyes because I knew that would take the most coats of paint and fortunately those were the most defined areas of the mold so it was pretty straightforward. And I really appreciate how deep the outline of his eyes are because that, oh, that was the part I was worried about the most. After that, I went on to do his little mouth muzzle thing and I made it a very light blue, which on camera, it just looks like it's white, but 
trust me there's a difference there's a lot of real estate on this guy's forehead as you can see so i added a few spots um, I actually dreaded doing this part because circles are the most difficult shape to get right. But I kept telling myself that I could just wipe the paint off and restart if I mess up, which fortunately I didn't have to do. And I think it turned out pretty good, if I do say so myself. Also gave him some cute little round eyebrows, which I think gives him some personality. And it also fits pretty good with the spots theme that I'm going with. So I really took my time with it and they're not perfect, but I think they're pretty cute and I'm happy with them. I also gave him a little blue nose because I saw that most of the official pet shop walruses have a little nose, which is pretty interesting because the G7 walrus in the blind boxes doesn't. So I'm considering giving it a nose at some point when I get that guy because honestly, it just looks so much better and it just makes him 10 times cuter. Next, I brought out my Mungyo pastels to add some blush to this little guy's face. I decided to stick with my blue color palette and I carefully brushed the pastel onto his cheeks, nose, and fins, which I think look pretty good. I really like how it looks on his back tail fin. I ended up giving him some white freckles to add more to the cuteness factor. I'm not sure if this was too much going on in the face, but I like it. And everything was going super well until I messed up the freaking tummy paint, which, ugh. Ah. Anyways, we live and we learn. And I tried to fix it with a toothpick and that helped quite a bit. But anyways, it's not that noticeable. So let's just move on to the eyes. Again, I started with really thin coats of paint, which really helped with this part. I also had done a pencil sketch over the whites of the eyes just to make sure I had a plan. I really commend customizers of like little pet shops and dolls and just, you know, in general toys because it's so difficult to get the eyes to look symmetrical and not wonky. <laughs> so this was probably the hardest part of the whole painting process for me. I tried my best to build up the darkest colors like the pupils and the lashes whilst also taking my time to really make sure it all looked right and even. Taking a second to just hold up the pet away from my face really helped with making sure everything looked good. Acrylic paint scratches off very easily after it dries, especially on plastic like this. So I used that to my advantage and I cleaned up the lines with a toothpick. I then went over the lashes for the last time and cleaned up the irises with white paint. Lastly, I added the whites in the eyes, which I was very, very careful about because even if it's just the slightest bit off, it looked just a little weird. <laughs> so you could see me getting really close and I just tried to be as precise as possible. I was like quite literally getting as close as I possibly could to make sure that it looked good and definitely got in front of the camera a few times. <laughs> I used the back of the brush to spread the paint into a circle, which was pretty helpful, but it was also kind of messy. So I had to use my super microscopic brush to clean up the edges. And with that, we are already done with our very first custom pet shop. This guy turned out so cute and I'm so, so happy with how he turned out and I am ready to move on to the next one. You guys ready? Let's go. Just like we started with our first one, we are going to completely wipe the entirety of her face off. And fortunately again, because they have barely any paint, that's pretty easy. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Since I already did a monochromatic palette with the walrus, I decided just to add a little bit more color to the cat. And by a little, I mean it, because she's mostly all white. <laughs> Jumping into the painting, I started with the eyes, which again, was made a lot easier by the deep outlines of the mold, yet I still managed to mess it up. I wanted to make the design more detailed, so I added some white to the ears and to the tip of her tail. I gave it kind of a scalloped edge because I thought it would look cute and it's kind of reminiscent of the OG LPS designs. I also added white to her paws, which was a lot more difficult than it looks. Having to go around each foot with all of the legs in the way was definitely a challenge. I still felt as though her face needed something, so last minute I painted a white bit around her muzzle and above her nose. And if you thought I was done with the white paint, you're wrong, because lastly, I added a bit of white above her eyes. And this was definitely inspired by that one orange cat, Lilith's Pet Shop, that has those like yellow bits under her eyes. Uh, I have that one and I definitely was thinking about it the whole time I was designing this one. And after many more white coats and lots and lots of waiting, I took a cantaloupe break. Beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, okay. Okay, that's enough. I drew with pencil where I wanted the eyes. I wanted her looking forward this time, so I did just that. 
I gave her a cute little pink nose and started on the irises of her eyes, which are pink as well. And after that, I added her cute pink toe beans and went on to doing the pupils. Jesus Christ. Now, if you thought the walrus's eyes were difficult, try painting a front-facing pet without making it look cross-eyed <laughs> because golly gee, this was stress-inducing. And guess what? I still didn't think there was enough white paint, so I put some white on her chest as well. Doing the eyeliner and lashes was interesting. I didn't want to do too much because, again, this was my first custom. Well, I guess second. So I went with something simple. And then the eyelashes. Anyone out there who has worn winged eyeliner will know the struggle of getting it to look symmetrical, but we're going for sisters, not twins here. Yet again, I brought out my Mungio pastels and added a bit of pink blush to her cheeks and inside her ears. Quick question to those who have pets. Do you call this your pet's cheeks or this? I'm kind of on both sides. I know this one is more accurate, but for human anatomy, it's different. Uh, anyways, this is completely unrelated to the subject of the video and I think we need to move on. Adding the eye sparkles, I did the trick with the brush handle again, which honestly I don't recommend. The paint turned out kind of lumpy, but I mean it still turned out okay. And that's all! Before I show these guys off, I added a coat of glossy Mod Podge, which for some reason I've been calling it Mod Podge. <laughs> <laughs> I also recommend sealing the rest of the paint so it doesn't chip off, but I haven't gotten around to doing that yet, so just take my word for it. But yes, here they are! Not to shoot my own horn, but I feel like these are pretty good for my first customs, and I'm definitely looking forward to doing more of these. Maybe I'll even do some dolls in the future? Ooh, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I do need some name suggestions for these guys, so please comment them down below. I'm thinking the cat is a girl and the walrus is a boy, but yeah. I would love to make this a series, so please let me know which of these pets you'd like to see me customize next. We have a lot of great molds to choose from. Also, I'm currently working on more products for my Etsy shop. I recently added some earrings as well, which is fun, and I'm really proud of them. All of that will be linked in the description, as well as all my socials if you're interested. I post a lot of art there, so there's probably things you haven't seen from me. I'm currently working on some stickers that are kind of related to this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day or night, and I'll see you guys in the next one, which hopefully will not take another year to come out. <laughs> okay, bye!